Dr. Idikula, at what point did you begin to plan for your orthodontic career and progressive practice? In other words, at what stage in your professional development did you begin to visualize the type of practice that you have? I decided to become an orthodontist the summer between my first and second year of dental school and then continue to pursue that and really research it, meeting with residents and faculty members and shadowing offices close to my dental school uh, for the following three years. And to truly come up with what I wanted out of my practice took a little longer than that. Um, I worked in a corporate dental group for two or three years after uh, residency and it changes all the time for me. We try to keep it fresh and new. So, um, you know, our office is centered around philanthropy and giving back to the community. Uh, but that's ever changing and trying to come up with creative ways to reach out to our patient population, to local schools, local communities, um, and things like that. So it keeps it fresh and fun. Technology plays an important part in your practice. How do you decide which technical assistance devices to incorporate into your practice? Of the technologies that you use regularly, which have you found to be the most beneficial to your practice and your patients? There's tons of gizmos and gadgets and all sorts of fun things that you can find in orthodontics. For me, it really comes down to practice efficiency and what's best for the patient. There's a lot of amazing things, but certain things when they hit the market are a little bit cost prohibitive. So if you can wait a year or two and the cost comes down, it tends to make a little more sense. But if the benefit is huge to the patient, um, we're, we tend to be an early adopter office of certain technologies. For our office, the biggest, the biggest change has been uh, 3D scanning, for sure. Um, we're, we're a big Invisalign practice, so we use the Itero scanner personally. Uh, there's a lot of scanners on the market. Cost is coming down across the board. Uh, I can't imagine in three or four years any orthodontic office that does not have a scanner. How did you develop your philosophy of treatment? Uh, I'm going to be a different breed on this. Uh, my philosophy of treatment is, is make patients happy when it comes down to it. And there, there are textbook standards of orthodontics, which we must abide by. But um, I think there's a little disconnect between patients and doctors. And I think patients actually arrive to a very happy space way earlier than doctors do. So in our office, our biggest goal is to have happy patients. And sometimes a happy orthodontist does not lead to a happy patient. I think, uh, I think in our profession, patients are pretty happy uh, earlier than we think. And that doesn't necessarily mean take braces off or finish wearing aligners, but I think worth it on us to start balancing patient expectations and patient happiness versus what the textbook tells us. Which finishing techniques are most important to you to develop consistent results? I'll tell you the best finishing technique is to figure out when patients are happy. Period. That's it. I mean it. Charity and philanthropy is a big part of your practice. Would you explain why you believe giving back is beneficial to the community, your practice, and you personally? Uh, charity and philanthropy are a cornerstone of our office, uh, and it's just completely just based on how I was raised and having role models, uh, role model parents. And my father was one of the most selfless people uh, that, that walked in the hospital where he was a surgeon. And my mother gave up her whole life working, working, working for everything that we needed and wanted. So it really is just in my blood. It's, and it was taught to us at a very early age. So when we established our office, it was going to be very clear that giving back was going to be a major component of what we did. And as I became more seasoned in the profession, I realized that uh, as, as much as orthodontics can afford us lifestyle-wise in terms of you know, fewer days worked and a good income, uh, I was really... I was really jaded at the fact that a lot of us don't practice based on what our orthodontic residency application outlined. I think the number one thing an orthodontist needs to do is to treat every single kid in need in their local community. No questions asked. No questions asked. Do not turn away a single child. Reach out to every single nonprofit and just tell those nonprofits to send, 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 flood your doors. The paying patients will come but there's only so few of us that can actually straighten teeth the right way. So open up your doors, give back. I promise it will return in more ways than what a bank account can measure. So my biggest goal in the entire profession is not to straighten people's teeth, but to realign 
the entire orthodontic profession on what's right, and that's giving back, that's being selfless, giving back to an uncomfortable level, and making sure we're not just aligning teeth, but aligning hearts.